Thousands of people from across the United States have started arriving in Washington for the historic inauguration tomorrow of Barack Obama. The authorities in D.C. are preparing for millions of people to witness the swearing in of America's first black president. Last night, the Irish band U2 were among the performance among the performers at a special inaugural concert in honor of the president-elect. It was an emotionally charged start to the build-up of the inauguration of Barack Obama tomorrow. Over half a million people crowded onto the Mall, close to the Lincoln Memorial at the spot where Martin Luther King delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. I was walking Some of the biggest names in American entertainment took part in the special inaugural concert. As I went But it was the Irish band U2 who were given pride of place to play just before the president-elect spoke. What a thrill for four Irish boys on the north side of Dublin to honor you, sir, the next president of the United States, Barack Obama. Then the man they'd all been waiting for. In the course of our history, only a handful of generations have been asked to confront challenges as serious as the ones we face right now. Our nation is at war. Our economy is in crisis. Millions of Americans are losing their jobs and their homes. I won't pretend that meeting any one of these challenges will be easy. It will take more than a month or a year, and it will likely take many. It's a national holiday across America today in honor of the birth of the civil rights leader, Martin Luther King. And what a moment of history it is. In just 24 hours time, the first African American will be sworn in as president of the United States. Charlie Bird, RT News at the White House. And Barack Obama's inauguration can be seen here on RTE1 from 20 to 5 tomorrow afternoon. A 21st meeting of the Doyle, which was a crucial step on the road to independence. TDs and senators will join descendants of those elected to the first Doyle for a special joint sitting of the Houses of the Oireachtas at the Mansion House in Dublin. Enthusiastic crowds outside Dublin's Mansion House in January 1919 as Sinn Féin fulfilled its election promise to abstain from Westminster and establish an independent Irish Parliament instead. I was, of course, very interested in the Sinn Féin movement to establish a parliament, but I had no idea that I'd be one of the members myself. The Sinn Féin campaign had been helped by the British threat to introduce military conscription early in 1918. All nationalist politicians opposed the move, but it gave a boost to the more radical Sinn Féin and spelled the end of the old Irish Parliamentary Party. I mean, Redmond and Dillon and these, they were politically assassinated by the British government. Sinn Féin won 73 of the 105 Irish seats. 40 TDs were either in jail or deported, so only 28 deputies attended the first session, held under the watchful eye of the Dublin Metropolitan Police. The author of A New History of the Doll says that first meeting was highly significant. Previous revolutionary or social changes had consisted of very small clandestine groups attempting to seize power generally through military means. And what the importance of the first doll and the meeting of the first doll is that it gave a huge democratic legitimacy to the move for Irish uh, independence. The doll agreed a declaration of independence, a message to the free nations of the world and a democratic programme drawn up as a gesture to Labour which hadn't contested the election. Tomorrow's official commemoration is a day early. Sinn Féin managed to book the Mansion House on the exact anniversary on Wednesday, but said it would share the date if the commemoration, like the first doll, was an all-Ireland event. We could ship out whatever the government needed, provided it was truly a national event and that there were co-equal uh, speaking rights, and they said no. Tomorrow's commemoration will be followed by a nationwide tour of an exhibition of photojournalism relating to the history of the doll. David McCullough, RT News. We have a special programme on the 90th anniversary celebration starting here on RT1 at a quarter to 11 tomorrow morning. Now coming up next on 6-1 News with the inauguration of the new American president to take place tomorrow, Barack Obama's Offaly relatives are back in the spotlight.
In sports news, Malcolm O'Kelly will appear before a discipline. Good morning to you and welcome to our live coverage from the round room of the Mansion House in Dublin this morning on the commemoration of the meeting of the first Doyle 90 years ago this month. A joint session of the Doyle and Shannon to mark this historic occasion. Uh, this commemoration of one of the key moments in the founding of the state which uh, today uh, we celebrate. With us here in studio, Sean Dignan, RT's former political correspondent and news anchor who uh, covered and reported on the 50th anniversary celebrations uh, in 1969, and Michael Laffin, Professor Michael Laffin from University College Dublin, author of The Resurrection of Ireland, Sh the Sinn Féin Party 1916 to 1923. We'll be talking to them uh, presently and also going over uh, for this morning's session, talking also to our political correspondent David McCullough, who's standing by outside uh, the um, mansion house before that though uh, I think we can take a look at some of those who've been uh, as I said Sean you reported on a similar event uh, <laughs> 1940 the years ago. The 50th anniversary. <laughs> yeah it was interesting and again in the round room and uh, the interesting thing then there was 11 people on the platform they were uh, survivors of the first Doyle and uh, just to mention a few of them Dick Mulcahy was there, Sean McEntee, uh, Ernand de Blyde, um, Dr Jim Ryan and Robert Barton, who went on to be, you know, be a co-signatory of the treaty, he, and they all looked very, very well uh, at that particular time. Um, Michael, we, we will take a look back at, uh, at the events uh, of, of, the, of that time in just a moment, but, but today the significance of the gathering of that first oil. I think the main significance is that we can look back now with the distance of 90 years. Uh, Sean was uh, merely 50 years on uh, when, when, when he looked at it. Uh, it has receded into the past. It's become established now as a key event in the consolidation of Irish democracy. And that, I think, is the main reason why we look back on it with, with great interest and with some pride. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in, the, uh, in, the next, uh, in the next little while. But first of all, let's look back at that historic day, the 21st of January, 1919, when the first Doyle met. Here's our political correspondent, David McCullough. January 21st, 1919, the first meeting of Dáil Éireann drew large crowds to Dublin's Mansion House as inside, Sinn Féin TDs declared Irish independence. Public opinion had swung towards Sinn Féin after the British executed the leaders of the 1916 Rising. Prisoners jeered on their way to prison, were cheered on their release. The crowd surged up, they caught him, they hoisted him on his shoulders. He, he was taken with 5,000 people behind him to the Treaty Stone. That was rather typical of what happened all over the country. In the summer after the Rising, the country changed. The party won a number of by-elections with candidates like Eamon de Valera and gained even more ground after Britain threatened to introduce conscription. The key man in the whole thing was like George, conscription. Because every bloody mother down the country wasn't that so soon I'd be cut by the back of the nest and put into the British Army, do you see? And out, and out to France. The anti-conscription protest helped Sinn Féin to overshadow the old parliamentary party of Redmond and Dillon. In December 1918, it was reduced from 76 seats to just six. Sinn Féin won 73 of the 105 Irish seats. But with 40 deputies either in prison or on the run, only 28 attended the first meeting of the Dáil in the round room of the Mansion House. They adopted a constitution for the Dáil, as well as a message to the free peoples of the world and a declaration of independence, although opinion was divided on the wisdom of calling for a republic. The Dáil Ireland Republic was an impossibility and that it was really asking for terrible trouble to declare it at that time. Most of us in the jail thought that what should, the Dáil should have done was to declare for self-determination. The first Dáil also adopted a democratic programme, a relatively radical social programme, as a gesture to Labour which had stood aside in the 1918 election. But many in Sinn Féin were less than enthusiastic about the document. Uh, you couldn't impose upon our society in those days uh, what, what one would describe as a uh, socialist or quasi-socialist policy. Uh, the Labour Party secured the adoption of it. I don't think anybody, practically speaking, bothered with it afterwards. The independence movement had a military side as well with the Irish volunteers, soon to be renamed the IRA. 
On the very day the doll met, two RIC men died in an ambush in Solahed Beg in Tipperary, the first shots of the War of Independence. As the violence intensified, the doll was driven underground by a British ban, but it continued to function, acting as a crucial propaganda.